So I just finished um, the end of this vampire dystopian novel that I've been working on. I want to make a video about my editing process. So what do I do when the first rough draft is finished? How do you edit a book, um, a novel specifically? And how do you revise a book after you've gotten through and written the end? So you have a clean rough draft. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my writing process for writing fiction. Eventually I'd like to do a whole um, write a book from scratch, uh, writing and outlining and plotting and editing and everything and make um, a, a video series. But for now, I'm just putting out this little video to show you my process, which is not perfect and it's messy, um, but I have written probably five or six full length novels or like, I don't know, half a million words or something like that of fiction. So I'm um, plus, I've been a full-time editor for, for many years. I have a PhD in literature, so I have a background in editing. And actually, I'm a much stronger editor. So I know some authors, they hate the revision process. They hate the editing process. Um, and I find generally, but not always, that's because they're pantsers or they're writers who write from the seat of their pants, which means they don't like to plot. They don't like the organization. They just sit down and, and write the whole book, um, which is great if you can do that. But what generally happens is you end up with a pretty messy manuscript with some stuff that doesn't really make sense. Um, which means you're, you're going to need more editing or a more qualified editor who's going to need to do more work to turn it into an actual novel that people want to read. Um, so I tend to plot an outline really well. That's my strength. So when I finish a first rough draft, I have less to do to make it finished for publication. And actually, um, part of the, because I'm such a slow dra drafter, because I'm, I'm what really holds me up is the drafting the first rough um, manuscript. I actually put this book up on pre-order a couple weeks ago, which means I had to get it done. Um, and now I have about two weeks left to edit it. And it's still really rough. So I'll, I'll walk you through where I am right now and also um, what I plan to do in the next couple weeks to really turn it into something I can put up and publish um, very quickly. And this is kind of, um, I said a three-step step book revision process because I don't think people have done it the way that I do it before, which is a what, why, and how. Um, those are the main three revision processes I go through. Um, but then I added a couple extra down here, which will um, add up. So this really could be a five-step revision proce process or like going through the book um, five more times after you finish writing the rough draft, which is probably a good idea. Not everybody will need to do that. And I have some friends who just send it straight to a proofreader and the proofreader just cleans it up for typos um, and they publish that way. And that's fine also. This is just the way that I do it. Um, and the way that I recommend you do it, especially if you don't have a lot of experience writing fiction, you really want to make sure you write fiction that readers enjoy or, or books that sell, because that can be really important. Um, so I'm going to go through and show you the chapters and kind of the way that I organize. I still write in Microsoft Word. Um, I've been testing out a couple other programs. I'm actually writing um, on my iPhone and with a portable a Bluetooth keyboard because that seems to boost my word count up to like 2,500 words a day, which is awesome. Um, previously, it was like 1,300 or something. So if I can get that down, I might keep track of my word count goals. I might have something like um, my clean rough draft, like what do I want to do? Um, I might also in my manuscript have something like this where I'm talking about or I'm reminding myself how I want to launch, what, what I want to rank number one for when I launch this book. Um, my goal is to sell 500 copies, although actually I'd really like to sell a thousand copies on pre-order. Um, I'm not sure if that will happen because like I said, I've just finished the rough draft. I have two more weeks to um, do all my marketing and all my editing. So I may not do a, a really good launch um, initially. Like if I can just get the book out on time before the deadline, I'd be happy with that. And then I can do some marketing and launching um, after it's live, which is easier anyway, because I can get reviews. Um, and also what I do is once I've Sometimes I'll like push through a few chapters and if I get stuck, I'll go back towards the beginning um, and I'll edit it again. So the first 10 or 15 chapters of this book are actually pretty clean. Um, and what I generally do is I'll go through and um, once I've gone through enough that it's clean and ready to publish, I'll take away the notes. Um, so these chapters are still pretty rough. If I still have the notes of what happens in those chapters, then um, this is a, a chapter I'm still going to have to go through and do a lot of editing. I did kind of skip down to the end. Um, so some of these I think are increasingly rough. I really wanted to get the book done. This is a book I've been working on for like four or five months um, and I just couldn't make progress for a long time. But I finally pushed through to the end. Um, I leave a couple stars here also just to kind of tell me where I am, like which chapter scene I'm still working on. Um, I have a couple extra things here, but 
I think the book actually ends here on chapter 22. Um, I've written the end down here somewhere at the bottom. Um, so I, I mean, that's a place that was important to get to, but I actually skipped through a lot of scenes or left like rough notes to myself um, to get to this point. So there's some writing I still need to go through um, and do. I really shouldn't have skipped over it, but I, I feel more confident with the editing part. So I'm also really excited now that I've gotten down here and I know what happens, I can go through and really start cleaning it up um, well. So like I said, the, the first step is just the plot, the story, what actually happens. Um, so you don't want to worry too much about the writing. You don't want to keep revising or keep polishing scenes if you might have to cut them out. Um, sometimes you're kind of building scaffolding in the first draft. So I've narr I've gone through my scenes as I see them right now, but they don't all make perfect sense. And I may find stronger ways of organizing those scenes. Um, so that's something I may want to go back through. Oops, excuse me. But now that I've reached the end, um, I can go through it again. I'll read from the beginning. Now that I actually know what happens all the way through, um, when I go back and read through it, this is the first time I'll be able to really um, fix the core problems because I probably skipped things that were too hard or complicated or characters didn't know the things that I knew or, or the things that were going to happen. Um, but now that I have a really clear, I already knew what, like, what I wanted my ending to be. Um, and I actually didn't end up reaching it. My perfect ending that I had planned from the beginning of this book. Um, I decided it doesn't really work for the ending of book one. I'm going to save it and try to do it sometime in book two. That's always a really difficult position to just choose like how you're going to end the first book, especially if it's in series and you want to save some stuff for book two as well. So I have a whole bunch of content that didn't really fit in this book um, that I can start with when I do book two or a bunch of reveals and stuff that, that didn't really work all the way through. Um, so what I'm going to do this week is go through and just clean it all up. So there's still like a bunch of gaps. There's still a bunch of notes. So I'm basically just finishing the story. But now that I know where it goes and I know what actually happens, it should be um, a lot easier to fill in those blanks um, and clean everything up. I'm not going to try to make it perfect or like improve the writing or, or you know, uh, make the writing beautiful. It's still kind of early, too early for that. I'm just trying to get a readable um first draft, first rough draft. So like there's there's sections where I just have, like these are just extra notes. Like this is a whole other scene which I kind of wanted to fit in um, that doesn't really work. And I also have something I keep track of um, are scenes that don't really fit. So these are things I want to have in the book because they're really powerful scenes. So I kind of think of my book in terms of pictures, um, but I didn't really fit them into the plot. So I want to go back through these scenes and see if there's a way that I can put this stuff in or um, improve some of my scenes to make them better. But my goal with this um, first clean rough draft, this is kind of like the first ugly rough draft, um, which is always going to be pretty bad and really should be kind of bad because you're just trying to get to the end. But then I'll go through this first cleansing period and I'll just try to get through the whole book and get rid of a lot of those notes or turn them into little scenes. So even if it's not perfect, it's, it's one fluid experience. I could read through it from the beginning to the end. Um, and that might take a while. That might take, you know, a week of, because of, it's not just really editing or proofreading. It's still quite a bit of um, writing. So there's probably another five or 10,000 words I might need to tease out um, to fill in the gaps. And I'm already at, at almost 90,000. So I'll probably get to 95,000. Um, I'd like to keep it at about 95,000. So we'll see kind of how that goes. Um, but once I get through and I have taken out a lot of, a lot of this stuff is extra notes too. So a lot of this stuff I can take out and remove and put in, in another folder or file and keep it for, um, the start of book two when I start writing that. But once I've got number one done, um, I'll actually see if I can just cross this out. Um, then I'll go to the second revision, which would be why. And this is also really important. Um, not everybody does this, but I like to have really clear, um, conflict between characters. Some people do this naturally. Some authors just um, invent conflict. But what you don't, what I don't really like is dramatic conflict where um, there's just a lot of misunderstanding because the characters aren't talking to each other. So they're just getting angry or fighting for no reason. Um, I like to have solid backstory and um, motivators so that like if you need something to happen, you need to give your smart and capable characters a reason to do stupid things. Um, and it has to be a, a justifiable reason. So you have to explain it well enough or give them some kind of a motivation 
that makes sense. So that can be done with backstory or more information. Um, and you want to be inventing stuff. If there isn't, like even if exciting things happen in all your chapters, you still want character conflict even between friends or even between, or especially between um, the romantic elements that there's reasons why, like this is, I do young adult, which is very plot focused. So I have a plot focused um, story architecture, but there still needs to be a lot of conflict between the romantic interests, the protagonists and, and the romantic interests. Um, so they have to have reasons of not being together and betrayal and trust issues and, and stuff like that going on. Um, just to make every scene matter more. So every scene, something should happen, um, but then there should also be internal conflict, not only in the mind of the of the protagonist, like things that she should always be conflicted about what she wants to do and what's the choices available to her. There should never be an easy path. Um, she always has to be making difficult decisions. So you want to keep putting the pressure on her and it should get harder and harder. Um, but then you also need to think about your your information dumps and your secret reveals which is just like if you have a twist ending or something, I always like to have a couple twists um, or reveals for later in the book. I've, I've gotten to most of them. Like I said um, in another video, sometimes I get to the end and I still have all these reveals and all this extra information. I actually have some really huge reveals that aren't even going to fit in this book. Um, so I'm going to save them to the next book, but there's still a couple of big reveals that need to be divulged um, in the last couple of chapters. And I haven't quite probably put all of those in the right space so far. I've kind of dropped some of them in there. Um, I need They need to be much better and, and better written. Like when you do a reveal, there has to be this, you can't just kind of blow it off and move on to the next um, bit of action right away. You kind of have to make your readers feel like, wow, this is a significant piece of information. This really impacts the protagonist. She needs, you know, to be kind of floored by it. Um, sometimes you can have a protagonist break down sobbing or, or something like that. Um, mine don't usually do that, but she needs to be taken aback. She needs to, to show that this new information matters and it changes things. Um, so those need to be kind of well written. But this is all the why stuff. So in the second revision, I'm just going through, I have all the what happens. I need to make sure my characters are properly motivated and that all the information is there so that readers understand why the characters are doing these things or why these things matter why do they need to go do this thing or why wouldn't they do this other thing that's way easier um you don't want them to just look stupid because they didn't think through this stuff so you want to show all the options and explain why your characters are acting the way they do or why the antagonists are doing the things that they're doing um not just because you know they're they're mean or evil or, or whatever you have to properly properly flesh it all out um so that would be my second revision and this would still probably be a lot of like writing um, fixing, improving the story, and just making sure the information is there. Um, finally, in the third revision, and I'm also like, when I go through, I'm also looking for typos. Um, I'm not specifically doing proofreading, but I would be fixing typos or grammatical issues or punctuation or whatever I found. Um, there's probably a lot of them, so it's going to take a few passes. Here in the third one, I'm going to focus on the how. So this is where I'm improving the actual book or the story. Um, but I'm not really focused on the language. So a lot of authors will focus on fixing the individual word choices or sentences. They'll try to hone the language. And the language doesn't actually matter that much, especially for fiction. Um, you don't really want lyrical prose. You want great stories. So the way you have great story is to put pictures in your reader's head with description and clarity. So you have to be really clear about what the scenes look like. All of your scenes, all your characters, um, they should have distinguishing features or characteristics or costumes. Um, you want to make your scene or your character more interesting than um, a stereotype or a cliche. You want to make them more specific. Um, they have to stand out. They have to be memorable and interesting. They have to be something readers are attracted to but haven't really seen done in other fiction before. Um, so new and interesting settings, new and interesting characters, those are all things you, you might want to um, improve on and just make it bigger like you 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 don't have to make them too realistic because this is fiction you want to make them um, depending on what kind of things you're writing you want to give them something um, personal I usually in my little book on on um, what is it visual plotting I talk about how you should have one flash of red in every um, every character every scene so you have like one every character has one little device or um, keepsake or symbol that refers to some of their backstory and is probably a flash of color and that they might have to lose or give up 
um, in a dramatic way to kind of show their shift towards their new future. I usually have something like that, and then I'll usually have something like um, in a scene, I'll have one main color scheme in a scene to represent the mood, and then I'll have one contrasting um, bit of color somewhere in the middle. So you, you want to think about it kind of in the way that you would as a book cover or a piece of art. Every scene, and usually my scene, my chapters have two or three scenes, um, one scene should be like one beautiful painting that's really simplified and has one symbolic item that represents the, the chief conflict or core conflict of the scene. You probably can't do that in every scene or every chapter, but um, especially on the pivotal scenes, um, there are 12 major scenes that you probably want to hit in most commercial fiction. I won't go through them in this video, but you can um, look for my videos on the plot dot or grab my the plot dot formula. If you Google that, you'll find a PDF or something. Um, anyway, so this would be the third revision. By the time I finish the third revision, I'm going through, I'm doing visuals and sensations and like how things look and smell. Um, I'm really getting down into the nitty gritty, focusing more on, on the protagonist's mood and emotions. You don't want her to be too emotional and too flip floppy. She can't be like laughing, crying, um, you know, in the same chapter. That's kind of a sign of, of weaker writing, but you do want to give her some major emotional events and, and show her responding to those emotional events. And for me, this is a bit like pageantry. Like even though I could just have a, a simple scene somewhere and I, if maybe I'm thinking about the action or the conflict between characters, but you really want to be thinking like if this was on a TV screen, if this was a Netflix um, film or a YouTube film, how would they frame this to make it really interesting? You want to be thinking that way, kind of like a film, film filmographer. Um, and just think about how it looks. Um, because if you can think in terms of scenes that way, and this isn't necessarily the first thing. This is like, you definitely want to focus on the what first, but once you've gone through the what and the why, um, you do want to just make everything better, make everything more visual. And that's really something you can go back through and edit kind of on the third draft. I'll be paying attention to, you know, what were they wearing? Um, what does everything smell like? What else was going on? What other sensations can you find? And just try to make everything more vivid and more realistic. Um, and then after that, the fourth phase, and the crosses went out. Um, then I'd really focus on the beginning and ends. So the first paragraph of every scene and the last paragraph of every scene or the ending hook, um, every scene, every chapter. So like I said, a chapter might have two or three scenes. So you want to make sure that the hook into every scene is really strong. Um, and the ending hook at the end of the scene or the end of the chapter is kind of like a mini cliffhanger. Um, I try to do those as much as possible all the way through the book so that, and this is something like you probably can't come up with the right first sentence for your book until you finished um, two or three passes. So like right now I'm kind of leaving my first sentence the way it was. Um, but after I've gone through the whole book two or three times and I've done the how and everything, I can really focus on, like, I don't want to necessarily fix every sentence in the entire book because I don't think it's that important to focus on, um, you know, making the writing beautiful. I think that can often get in the way. It's actually a sign, I think, of amateur writing. Um, writers who think they're great writers, so they write really beautiful um, sentences and, and beautiful word choices, and they really love the craft of writing. That's usually annoying to readers who just want to read the story and not be distracted by, you know, the, the author's vocabulary. So I would be careful about that. I think it's kind of a sign of weaker writing if you focus too much on each sentence. You really want to focus on um, keeping them reading. If you can't keep them reading your story, you're going to have a huge problem because if they don't finish your story, they're not going to buy other books. They're not going to go on to buy book two. Um, so you really have to get their attention quickly and you have to hold it the whole way through the book. And the way to do that is the first paragraph um, of every scene and chapter and the ending hook of every scene and chapter and then the conclusion. So you don't, especially in novels or especially in, in, in serials, you don't really want to end with a perfect happy ending. Um, you do want to resolve a lot of the chief conflicts in the first book and then kind of open the door for new scenes, new characters, more to, to continue. But then probably you want to add extra. So I could end it, mine always end kind of on a cliffhanger, even the ones that are pretty well resolved. Um, still kind of end on a cliffhanger. Uh, my readers don't like that very much, but it, it's really great for sales and sell through, especially my, my readers, like they complain about cliffhanger endings, but they will buy the next book 
right away if they can, if it's available. Um, but the other thing I'll probably do in most of my books um, is I'll finish with kind of a soft ending that's mostly wrapped up, but then I might include um, chapter one of book two. And I haven't always done it this way because I, I usually don't know exactly, like by the time I finish the end of book one, I don't even know exactly where I stand or what happens next in book two. Um, but if I could add the first chapter of book two at the end of book one, um, I would do that most of the time if it was available. And at the end of that chapter, I would have, you know, buy the next book now or buy the next book on pre-order. Um, if you're if you're on top of things with your timing and publishing, you can do it that way. Um, otherwise, I'll just end on a cliffhanger and, and say, you know, when this next book is ready, sign up to my email list and I'll let you know. Um, or ideally, at the end of book one, if it ends on a cliffhanger, you'll just have a pre-order link right away to the next book in the series. That's the That really is optimal. It works really, really well. But then you have to finish the second book um, really quickly within three months because three months is the limit for pre-orders on Kindle. Um, so I'm not necessarily that confident that I can finish a book in three months. I should be able to have done it in the past, um, but this book, like I said, took me like five months. So hopefully I'm, I'll am i become more confident um, putting books out on pre-order and, and finishing them quickly so that I can um, put more out. Also, this is like a 100,000 word novel. Um, I really should be writing 50 or 60,000 word shorter books so I could get them out faster. I haven't made that switch yet, um, but I'll be experimenting with that soon. Um, anyway, so that's really important. I'm going to cross that one out. And then finally, I would do like a final proofreading round. Um, and actually, like by the time I've gone through this four times, it's probably I'm I'm a pretty good editor. I'm, it's probably pretty clean already. Um, by this point, I might just publish it or put it out to my beta readers. Um, I don't personally hire an editor or a proofreader. I'm not recommending that for everybody because it can really be valuable. But because I have an editor editor's background, because I've edited um lots of books. I'm comfortable doing it myself. Like I said, this is kind of my strength. Um, so I'm really happy entering the editing phase where I know I can just polish this up and get a lot of work done quickly in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then it'll be up, you know, ready, ready to go. I can um, hopefully like the people who bought the book on pre-order are already my audience um, and they won't mind a couple of typos. If my pre-order readers um, get an advanced ARC copy, if I have any time, I would send the ARC copy out um, a month in advance of publishing and then I would have my beta readers send me a list of the typos and I would get them all cleaned up before I launch. Um, ideally, that's the way to do it, but because I'm pushing myself to deadline to um, publish quickly with pre-order deadlines, um, I don't always have time to do it as well as I should, which means I do sometimes publish books that have a lot of typos in them. Um, that's something I'm trying to fix and get better at, but it's also not the end of the world um, most people, like I, I get a lot of comments are like, I love this. It's too bad there were some typos, but it's still a great book. Um, I don't think that's the worst review in the world. And I also think most readers don't notice all the typos. They might read, catch a couple, but they probably won't notice all of them. Um, I'm not saying it's good to publish books with typos. I'm just saying it's important, more important to focus on the story, the what, why, and the how, um, and the first paragraphs and ending hooks. That all matters more. Um, you can't have too many typos or spelling or grammar mistakes, but if it's clean enough, like I probably have less than 50 mistakes in a 100,000 word um, book, which I don't think is is that many. Um, and by the time my beta readers go through it, they'll, they'll get more than half of those. So I might end up with like, you know, 10 typos in the whole book, um, which doesn't really bother me that much. And it'll bother some readers. Um, it's unfortunate I've published some stuff that is a little messier than that. But I do try my best to um, get most of the typos cleaned out. <clears throat> so that's kind of my five-step book revision process. Um, I hope it helps a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to make a whole bunch of other videos someday in the future where I share my entire like blank page to fully um, finish, ready to publish novel. I might do like a, I might record like the time, like how much time it actually takes me to go through all of those steps. I'm actually going to keep track. Um, while I'm editing this to see how long it's going to take me to finish editing this book. So I have two weeks. I'm going to keep track of the hours. I'm going to go through all of these steps. Um, and maybe in the notes for this video, I'll post how much time um, reading through it five times basically actually took me. So how many times to read through a 100,000 page, a uh, 100,000 word book um, five times. It's like I'm reading half a million 
words. So it, I'm not sure exactly how much time it will take me, but um, I'll keep track and see. It'd be kind of a fun case study. But I will do another video series in the future where I where I really talk more about how do you actually draft and pl plot and outline the book and get it ready um, to start writing the first rough draft. And then how do I actually get the first rough draft down? I've got a couple other videos coming out soon just on that process. So I hope this helps a little bit. Um, thanks. Bye-bye.